Hi, this is Michael Oral from MobileBurn.com. Today I have with me the Motorola Droid Cyborg 8.2 and 10.1 Android Honeycomb tablets. These 4G LTE capable devices will be available starting on December 20th for $429.99 and $529.99 respectively. So here's the Motorola Droid Cyborg 8.2 and the Cyborg. 10.1. We're going to take them out of the boxes. I can do that easily enough here. Here's the tablet itself. Uh, power button kind of oddly back here. So I'm going to turn it on. Take a look at the contents in the box. Start guide. A couple things on warranty, terms, conditions, that kind of stuff. USB cable, micro USB connector on it, a dedicated micro USB charger, and this is the LTE SIM card that Verizon has put in there ahead of time. Nothing else in the box there. And now I'll pull out the 10.1 model. Similarly, it has a power button here in the back, and this is also starting up. Now, in terms of a uh, box contents is a little bit different here because this model comes with an active stylus whereas the 8.2 does not this appears to be a little carrying case for that stylus you can see it has a clip on here let's pull the stylus and the battery out of the package as well and there's the stylus and the battery right there and just like with the 8.2 inch model, there's the pre-installed LTE SIM, dedicated micro USB charger, micro USB cable, start guide, and terms and conditions. So here's a stylus. I'm going to install the quadruple A battery. It's a very small battery. Just twist this, pull it out, stick the battery in like so, realign the edge, and twist it again. So here we have both devices. Uh, these things have a lot in common with each other in terms of general specs. Both are using a dual core 1.2 gigahertz processor and have a gig of RAM. Uh, while they have different size displays, you know, 10.1 inch display on the 10.1 model and 8.2 on the 8.2 inch model, they're both IPS uh, in-plane switching type LCD displays that feature 1280 by 1024 resolution, which is enough to show um, native 720p HD content. Both have 4G LTE connectivity as well. And uh, the styles that you see on the back are very similar. Basically differing only in scale. I can flip these around here. See a little bit of difference up here at the top where the uh, HD capable rear camera is 720p HD video recording on both of them, 5 megapixel cameras. They both have um, kind of a silver panel on the back. Although the 8.2 is a little bit cooler in that it has some little um, bolts here that hold the rear panel back on. Um, they're not user, user serviceable or anything like that, but um, they are pretty cool looking nonetheless. This is a rubber soft coat type finish here. Um, has a pretty good feel to it. Down the bottom on both devices you can see the SIM card slots for the LTE 4G SIM. It's also, uh, flip this over here, you can see we've got micro USB for charging and data as well as a micro HDMI port for output. Both devices have a pair of those connectors. Underneath the rear set power buttons are the volume controls. Uh, you can see that each device is meant to be held differently. Uh, Motorola envisions that you'll be holding the 8.2 inch model in a um, portrait mode, while the larger device will be held in landscape mode. In addition to the rear facing 5 megapixel camera, each device has a 1.3 megapixel camera um, that Motorola des uh, details as a webcam. In terms of battery capacity, the larger model uses a 7,000 milliamp hour battery. It's good for about 8 hours of use, uh, 4G LTE web browsing for example. The smaller model with the 8.2 inch display has a much smaller battery. Instead of the 7,000 milliamp hour battery, it has one that's just under 4,000 milliamp hours. And that's supposed to be good for just shy of 5 hours of LTE 4G um, web browsing use. In terms of weight, both devices are pretty respectable. Um, this device weighs about 390 grams. Uh, 
roughly 13 and three quarters of an ounce, which is pretty good. The 10.2, on the other hand, weighs about 590 grams, which is also pretty good. Uh, that's about 20.8 ounces. Both devices are pretty similar in terms of thickness. 0.34 inches for the larger 10.1 inch model and uh, 0.35 inches for the smaller device. Other dimensions measure 6.8 inches by 9.9 .9 inches for the 10.1 inch model and on the smaller model we've got 8.5 inches by 5.5 inches. Both devices feature infrared ports for use with a universal remote control application for controlling your television and set-top box. Here are the two Zyboards sitting on top of each other so you can see the relative size differences between the 10.1 and the 8.2 inch model. And just so you can get a feel for further comparison, here's a 7 inch Amazon Kindle Fire. Here are the two tablets powered up. You can see a pretty standard looking Android Honeycomb system here. Both devices are running Android 3.2. Main menu accessible up here with the apps button at the top of the screen. You have multiple panels you can scroll back and forth. You can also tap here to get to my apps and see things that have been updated or things that you've installed yourself. Do the same over here. And we'll pull up speed test on this device here. Right now I've got it zoomed full screen. There's a little zoom control down here you can tap on to change the way it's used. So now you can see it's running just in uh, normal resolution mode. You can run that test there. And this is with a fairly weak signal. We're only seeing two bars here. It's in my office. It's not a great LTE location. And you know, just from my desk, I've gotten 10 megabits per second, which is pretty unheard of for where I am and inside a building. So I've been pretty impressed with the LTE capabilities so far on these two devices. Go back to the home screen. If I hit the plus sign here, you get to controls where you can add wallpapers, widgets, app shortcuts, and things. You see the widgets right here. I'll take this one for AccuWeather and drag it onto the main home screen panel. I'll hit OK for my current location. And there it is, tap through. Also new wallpapers. and One of the things I don't like about the way widgets are organized though is you have to page through them. It takes a long time rather than the way you would get to widgets in a regular smartphone, at least prior to Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich. The results, we got 4 megabits per second down and 1.5 megabits per second up. I'm going to zoom back in to make it a little easier to read and go to the results and you can see in the past, I've gotten much better speed test results just from a few feet over closer to the window. In terms of differences in software between the two different devices, uh, there's not much there. We've got uh, virtual 3D surround sound it comes on the 10.1. The 10.1 also has Citrix receiver as opposed to just Citrix GoToMeeting. Um, that Citrix GoToMeeting is also found on the 8.2. And of course, there's the stylus integration. You see me pointing here with the stylus. You might notice the little note indicator down here and it pops up a menu here called Floating Notes. This brings up a special Floating Notes application. I can move this around while the rest of the screen is still functioning. Tap here to show you a list of some of the notes I've created. You see right here I wrote this with my fingertip and this I used the stylus and while I was definitely writing smaller trying to use the stylus it was as large as I could comfortably write and it doesn't really work that well. You can see a lot of the curves are clipped off and you can see that you also can uh, add text here. There's regular text that I typed in and you can change colors and stuff just by pressing on the brush and change brush sizes as well. This controls for saving it and sharing it elsewhere. It's a nice little system, but um, I don't really think it does too well with the stylus. Now I'm going to try to demonstrate the various pen input methods that we have here that we can use the stylus. I'm going to start with this one right here where you write on the actual screen. And almost got it. Missed the period at the end.
That one worked a little bit better. Space bar down at the bottom. Move to the next method. Gives you a writing area down here. Need to put the period there, see if it works. Did not. That one worked a little bit better. Lastly, this is an interesting method where you write from one box to the other. So while the pen base input seems to work in general, uh, I can't see how it's any faster or more accurate or definitely not easier to use than just a virtual keyboard.